Do you want to spend any time on objections you might hear and, and how to overcome them? What are they? What are the biggest objections? Competition? They are, they are springing up everywhere. Here's the dirty little secret in our industry. Incredible growth rate, 400% growth rate. Here's the dirty little secret. 375% failure rate. It's a complicated business. Technology's complicated. A lot of it doesn't work. Marketing's complicated. I can't tell you how many, friends, how many competitors I've seen try to copy what we've done, try to copy it for a few weeks, and then run to the next thing we're doing, try to copy that, not understanding that marketing is a long-term, sustained saturation commitment. Not something you do for six weeks and then try the next thing. So is it competitive? Yes. When I opened up the prototype clinic, I don't know that it gets any more competitive than Scottsdale. Beverly Hills, West Palm Beach. If you look at plastic surgeons per capita, this is one of the most competitive markets in the country. I had four other, franchise, I had four other competitors open up at the same time I did all of whom were out of business within a year, three of whom were out of business in six months. So you're going to have competitors. They're going to come and go. The, the two objections, let's take who the competitors are. Let's take the physicians. The physician that's leased a laser that's put it in his practice is a non-factor. And frankly, why there are millions of dollars of used lasers on the market. It's a bad model. Um, if you're a woman going to your OBGYN and he's got a laser there and he's doing laser hair removal once a week and you're Hispanic And you can do that, or you can go to a facility that's a national franchise, physician base, that this is all they do. They are absolute experts in it. It's all they do every day, all day long. Absolute and total specialists. That's the same reason that uh, plastic surgeons and dermatologists, plastic surgeons, they're focused on their core business at $4,000 per hour, not their laser center at $400 per hour. What I've discovered, now this is, uh, I'm not generalizing, but there's a lot of plastic surgeons that have no idea what's happening in their laser skin care center and don't really care. Their laser skin care center is simply a vehicle to feed the $4,000 an hour practice. Same theory. They're not specialists in laser skin care procedures. They're specialists in plastic surgery. They probably didn't receive any medical training in laser procedures in medical school. They're certainly not doing the procedures themselves. Uh, to a lesser extent, the same is true of dermatologists, particularly older school dermatologists. They went to medical school purely and simply for diseases of the skin, not laser and aesthetic skin care procedures. That's changing now as the colleges uh, uh, adopt these uh, curriculums and well, hopefully the University of Florida adopts the curriculum in, uh, uh, in short order. But the reality is, is it is not a dermatologist's core business. And here's another reality. I think it's less than 1% of the dermatologists in the country that are going to get that this is retail medicine, customer service matters. Uh, I had a franchise consultant from Atlanta um, who was advising a, uh, uh, 
uh, a potential master regional franchisee from Colorado before you bought. Um, and uh, uh, she said to me, uh, Carl, she had gone to the lake. She had had an allergic reaction to the sun or some sunblock or something. She had to make an emergency visit to her dermatologist uh, office. Uh, a 40 physician dermatology clinic that did these procedures. Well, she walked in, she got the standard medical office, PPO, HMO service, the front desk, sign in. I went to see a, uh, a, uh, my heart doctor, make sure my heart was sound. And the girl shoved the board at me, didn't even look at me did not even look at, just sign in. Okay. So she said, I did not know how you could compete with dermatologists until I went to this 40 person dermatology center. They had a few brochures on the wall and that was it. And then I realized how easily it's going to be for you to not only compete, but dominate, because they just don't get it. And by the way, the technology is just as complicated for them. They will never get the marketing. Uh, do you want to go to a, a spa, where the massage is being done in the next room, a facial in the room next to you, people running around the running track, and, and have laser vein removal, or a photofacial, or micro laser resurfacing, or even Botox, it's a bad model. And if you look at the expense of, of running a meta spa of any, you're gonna find very few profitable large meta spas across the country. The laser procedure should generate a minimum of $400 per hour an absolute minimum. Aesthetic procedures, $100. It's hard to get that to pencil out if you have high-end retail space, normal labor costs. Uh, it just, it's, it's, not, it's not good math. Now having said that, it's not like you have to put everybody out of business. There is room for a lot of people in the industry. I guess the point I'm making is, you have a far better mousetrap. Facials, microdermabrasion, light chemical peels, those are, the, those are the extent of the aesthetics of the fluff procedures. And frankly, they're loss leaders simply to bring people in so they see the loop tape running in the lobby and see how effective we are at treating all the other conditions that bother them. Veins, unwanted hair, round spots, wrinkles. They are not a profit center unto themselves. They're just a means to an end. And I'm very careful about even the facials because we have, we have taken great care to brand ourselves as medical procedures by medical professionals. And facials are kind of getting on the fringe. So I, that's as, frankly as far as I see us going. Seventy-three, salesman disclosure form. We should have from all of you a full and complete disclosure on who you are, disclose litigation history, if it's disclosable litigation. Um, this has all been done or, or you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be sitting here. You do wanna make sure when you disclose a prospect with the UFOC that 
your disclosure is in it. That is essential. That your personal disclosure, that uh, Peter Hill and Randall Dick, there is a, a page disclosing who you are, that you are franchise salesmen on behalf of the company. Laws affecting franchising, 74. I have a whole nother presentation on this that I actually want to get to before lunch. I am going to uh, I'll stop on 79. I'm going to talk about earnings claims. I'm going to spend a lot of time on them in the next presentation. By the way, the FTC laws are, are going to change to reflect reality, but they haven't, and we're going to adhere to them until they do. Earnings claims, you can't make profit projections, you can't make earnings claims. You can't tell someone they're going to make $100,000 per month. Your franchisees can. And that's why part of this process is that you need to educate during the franchise sales process to your franchisees validation is part of you becoming a franchisee. We know it's time consuming but we are reliant upon you for it. We want your commitment to it. We're going to need you to share your valuable time to talk to potential franchise prospects, to go over your numbers, because we can't. If you set up that paradigm from the beginning, now most of our, I mean our franchisees, I didn't set up that paradigm. They were simply thrilled with what was happening. I mean, Trishko Branson was, for, Talking for hours on end. She was just so excited about Dermacare. If you, but I would set up that, that precondition as part of the sale. Prep them that, that you want them to, uh, uh, that you're going to need them to, to validate.